Hey YouTube, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a first impressions video for you. And for those of you who already get what I'm going to talk about from the title, um, <clears throat> you'll sort of know kind of why these knives fit in. For those of you who don't, let me just say, these are two favorite knives of mine. I really, really like these knives, and the reason I like them is because they're a great balance of strength and durability with, you know, refinement and quality and utility, okay? Both of these knives, while being thick and heavy duty and overbuilt, you know, thick blade stock, all of that stuff, they're both extremely smooth. They feel great in hand. And both of these blades cut really, really well. This is nice and thin behind the edge. It's a slicing machine. And the same is true of, of the F3 with that nice hollow grind on the main cutting edge. And then the, the Tanto grind at the, at the tip. You know, with, again, that balance of strength and and uh, cutting performance. And I just love that. And so these two knives are really, really connect with me and I carry them all the time, even though they are a little bit too big and too heavy to be sort of practical EDC knives. Okay, now I've got these two out by way to introduce the knife that I really want to share with you, which I've got sitting right over here in a zipper pouch. So there is the knife I want to talk with you about. Before I open the zipper pouch though, I do need to say some thank yous to Birdshot IV, Frankie and Bird. Uh, I had a sale to finance the knife that's in here and they were kind enough to share not only the fact that I was having the sale, uh, but to repost my sale post on Instagram so that a lot more people could see it and check out what I had on offer. And, and so I really, really thank you guys for doing that and certainly had a big impact on my ability to pick up this knife. The other two people that I need to, to thank very much are Nick Shabazz, uh, I had a knife visiting from Nick for review. I had every intention of sending it back to him. And when this knife came, uh, became available, uh, someone sent me a message about it. Nick saw the message and said, Kevin, sell that knife that I sent you for review and use the money toward this knife. Now, it wasn't close to covering it or anything like that. Um, but with that help and with Frankie and Bird and Dr. Frankie all helping out, uh, I was able to finance this knife that I've got in the pouch. And so what is it? Well, this is a knife that I have been drooling over since I saw the first prototype. This is an Andrew Demko AD15. I love Andrew Demko's work. And when I first saw these knives, I was instantly enamored with them. They are amazing. I love the, the aesthetic that's created by the scorpion lock, by this sort of separate piece being here. I love the simplicity and the complexity of it kind of all at once. Because if you look at this, it's a very simple, very straightforward kind of knife. And yet uh, the, the, the scorpion lock and the way that it's implemented just adds a, a touch of artistry and a touch of interest that really elevates this knife to a new level. And so I've got, I, I absolutely love this design. And when, when, when Andrew put a couple on for a, a really, really good price after the New York Custom Knife Show, um, someone sent me the message. I can't remember if it was, it was Dr. Frunky or if it was Nico. Um, but one of them said, hey, Kevin, check this out. And, uh, you know, that kind of started the whole thing. And so here the knife is. I've now got an Andrew Demko 8015, and I am super, super stoked about it. So let's go ahead and kind of go through the features and some of the, the details on the knife. I'm not going to, this is not going to be my full review, of course, just a first impressions, but let's kind of take a look here. So we've got this beautifully hand ground blade, and I love that belt, that grinder satin finish. That's about my favorite knife finish, and it plays off really, really nicely against this this extremely well done stone wash. All right, nice big thumb studs there, some really oversized jimping that it's interesting the way this is done because it's, it's oversized and it's big and bulky, but yet it catches your thumb pretty comfortably without you know wanting to tear all the skin off or something like that. The grind is extremely thin. Look how 
nice that is. So, and by the way, this is sort of a, a feature that Demco is known for, for grinding these very, very thin. And, and so this is going to slice really, really nicely. I've only cut a couple of things with it. So obviously, you know, this is not where I'm going to elaborate on the performance of this knife because I just haven't had enough time with it. And then we have that really, really cool scorpion lock. So I want you to take a look at how this works. Uh, you have this lock bar and it's kind of it's on a pivot back here and so as you lift the pivot up this pin at the back drops into the blade or lifts out of the blade allowing it to close and then of course when you go to open the blade by the way really cool feature here the detent is created just by the shape of the tang of the blade there so the the interface here that just kind of creates the detent. There's a bit of a bump there and you kind of feel it release. So really, really cool idea. Um, in here, there is a coil spring that puts pressure up on the back of this lock so that it, it kind of holds everything in place. And then of course, when you grip the knife, it makes everything very, very solid. And it really is solid. And it's quite cool to kind of play with this because when you're playing with this, everything feels kind of loose and like it works very easily and very smoothly. But then when you grip the knife, all of a sudden everything is locked down like as solid as a rock. So really, really cool design. I'm a huge fan of the Scorpion lock, uh, at least up to this point. And I've never heard anything bad about it. And I did it quite a bit of research in uh, kind of figuring out what I thought of this knife. Now, that's the Scorpion lock. Really, really neat. Kind of a, a variation on the back lock or the strap lock. There, there are some similar ideas out there. Uh, you can see there's a second little stop pin in here. And I don't know if there, if, I don't know if it's, no, it's not touching. Uh, so all that pin does is, let's see if I can find it for you there. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> so all that pin does is catch on the top of the handle there to serve as a closed pin. All right, so it's almost like a, a dual stop pin design. There are a number of knives out there. You guys know Striders and the Benchmade 928 and a few others have two stop pins, one that stops it in the closed location, one that stops it in the open. This one stops it in the closed. And then this one, which is not only a stop pin, but also sort of a a lock post uh, stops it in the open position. One interesting thing is if you pull this back, you can actually overextend this knife. So that's not something you normally see uh, from very many knife designs. Um, then we've got, of course, the handle, which is titanium, except for where it's G10. Okay, so we've got, and of course the pivots, I'm assuming are gonna be all stainless steel. You can sort of see the polished stainless steel there. Uh, but yeah, titanium liners, titanium backspacer, titanium clip, all nicely blasted. Now likely that's gonna put, that's gonna age a little bit and you're gonna get some snail trails on there. And I think it'll actually look a lot cooler with that. Now, since we're talking about this and this is my knife and I, I love this configuration because to me, this is this knife just screams to be pocketed and carried and used hard. Um, but if you're one of those really refined type of people, you know, think about all the potential that's available with that lock bar. You know, you could do um, Timascus, you could do Mokotai, uh, a number of different cool materials could be used back here. And I think that's a really, really neat option. And then for the G10, you could do carbon fiber or various other things. And I've seen a few different variations already. Take a look here at the stop pin on this side, it says Demco Knives. And then on the other side, it's just a Torx, which is always nice to see in case you ever want to adjust that. And of course you do have a reversible clip. And one thing that's cool about this Scorpion lock is notice that it is full on ambidextrous. There is literally no difference from this side to that side. So you move this lock over and you really have a perfect knife that, that functions the same way, either right-handed or left-handed. So if you're a lefty, this is a great knife. Action on the knife is very, very smooth. You can see that it just drops shut very nicely there. And with a little bit of practice, uh, you can time this so that you can sort of open and close it just by actuating the lock, which is kind of a nice, you know, fidget factor there for the knife. Um, the grip, again, really, really nice. Uh, I haven't really commented on ergonomics and it just, yeah, it really, really fits in your hand well. There's a bit of a choil here and it works well like this. So if you're doing some fine cutting tasks in this formation, now if I try to get my whole finger and get the fat up on this portion of the finger in there, there is a potential that it could cut me. So uh, I'm not gonna, so it's not gonna function that way. 
Uh, let's grab some, some measurements here really quick so you know the size and weight on this guy. I'm sure it's, I mean, it's a moderately sized knife. What have we got here? Uh, so eight and five eighths inches overall. The blade on this guy is going to be three and three quarter inches. Um, what do we get for handle length? Well, so look at this. So here's the tang of the blade sticking quite a bit past the handle. So really what we're measuring here is closed length, not handle length. So the closed length is going to be five and one eighth inches. And if we just measure the handle itself, it looks like it lands around four and seven eighths. Okay, by the way, <clears throat> for those of you who wonder about the size that you can actually get your hands in here, it's about four inches, just a little under four inches. I've had a couple of you asking about that. Now this is a fairly thick knife and when I, let's see, so it's pretty much half an inch exactly. And we, get, uh, you know, I get lots of knives that are half an inch. Now I am gonna say this, I suspect this is fairly hefty, uh, five point something ounces or maybe close to six ounces. I'm not 100% sure yet. It doesn't feel super heavy in hand and maybe the fact that it's hollow will reduce the weight a little bit. Guess we'll see here in a second. Uh, it is in ounces. Let's go ahead and measure this guy. 6.59 ounces. So 6.59 ounces, it's pretty hefty there, guys. Uh, this, this is a knife that could maybe stand to go on a diet a little bit. Uh, but honestly, I've already carried this, and uh, to me, that, that's not a, a deal breaker at all. Uh, obviously, remember that I do carry this knife, so uh, this guy's over 10 ounces. And this guy is about 6.5 ounces as well. So uh, that's not a big concern for me. Uh, now that we've got those specs out of the way, what are my, what's my overall thought on the knife? Well, you know, this is going to be sort of an EDC plus type of knife. It's definitely heavy duty. It's definitely built to take quite a lot of use. And so, you know, it, it's, it's, going to be a knife for the kind of person who, who goes above and beyond with their folder. And by the way, this is not a knife, and no custom knife really is, for the average person on the street who just says, hey, you know, I'd like to buy a good folding knife. Well, you know, buy a Spyderco, buy a Benchmade, something like that. Even, you know, go up to a Hinderer if you really, really want. Uh, but this is an enthusiast knife, right? Let's let's be honest. There's, there's not too many people going into Canadian Tire looking for a knife who are going to be like, yeah, you know, I looked around Canadian Tire and I ended up deciding on a custom Andrew Demko. Um, if though you're into knives and if you love the kind of knives that I love, things like this and things like this, uh, then yeah, this is a perfect addition to my collection. I absolutely love everything about this. I love the design, I love the function, I love the utility. Uh, just an amazing, amazing piece and I am so stoked to have it. Thanks a lot for watching. Look forward to my full review, of course, where I'll get into more of the detail here and talk about cutting performance and edge retention and all that kind of stuff. Uh, by the way, if you, I, I don't think I mentioned that the steel on this particular one is S35VN. Uh, Andrew works in a bunch of different steels, so I think they, there are these out there in 20CV, in AEBL, uh, obviously S35VN, and I'm sure there's some other steals as well that he's done. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we will talk to you soon.